Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let's go before our Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. There is no other God but you. You are gracious and precious God. We love you, Father God, for opening up our hearts and showing us the correct way. We thank you. You're so great, so mighty. Thank you for peace. Thank you for rest. Thank you, Father God, for excitement. Thank you for entertainment. Thank you for enjoyment. Because if we didn't truly enjoy it, we could not be entertained. We love you, Father God, for your word. We love you, Father God, for your, your reconciliation. Mm -hmm. There is no other God but you. Thank you. We hope, Father God, and we believe that we are living repentant lives before you in thanksgiving. We thank you, Father God. Now I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this night. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of tonight's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. And all will agree with that prayer, say amen. 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 Turn your Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 22. Last week, we, we left off, we were teaching on what? Prayer. 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 What prayer did we start teaching on last week? Faith. Oh. Uh oh, did I miss one? That is why it's so important. To write it down, go back, reread, restudy. Everything has been everything has been recorded. Get the DVD, get the CD, YouTube it, something. Okay. We were teaching on the prayer of consecration and dedication. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Prayer of consecration and dedication. Prayer of consecration and dedication. We are supposed to be living consecrated lives. Somebody came and asked me the other day. They said, I read. They said, don't you, said, don't you drink? Nope. I drink water, Pepsi, and orange juice. Not all the time in that order. You don't drink nothing? No, for what? I'm in total control of this mind. I'm in total control of this body. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't do any kind of drugs. Uh, only drug that I do do consistently on a consistent basis is allergy medicine, and I'm believing by faith that I will be off of that even soon. The doctors have tried to put me on blood pressure medicine. I take it for a heartbeat minute, and then, no, I rechange my eating habits. I, do, I drink more water. I exercise something better. I said something about it. I sure did. I find ways why I, can, I want to be in control of this body. I want to be in control of this body. I take my vitamins. I drink plenty of water. I, I've, I've even cut, as much as I like orange juice, I've even cut back a lot of orange juice because the sugar content in for me is getting too high as I'm getting older. As I'm getting older. And that's only because I'm getting older. And I have to watch my blood sugar. I mean, I'm not diabetic, so don't mind me writing me out to ask me. I'm probably, Pastor got diabetes. He said it. No, Pastor did not say that. I'm making adjustments to this body because I'm getting older. And I understand that because when I get to be 50, I want to be healthy when I get there. When I get to be 60, I want to be healthy at 60. And so forth and so forth and so forth. And if I have to make adjustments then, I'll make adjustments then. I am in control of this body except for the control that I have relinquished over to the Holy Ghost and he can have all of me. <laughs> Comprende? Yeah. We must learn to live a consecrated life. With that being said, we can just go back and reread it. In Luke chapter 22. Look at verse 41. Look at verse 41. Here is Jesus, right when he was finna get and take the weight of sin on himself. Look what it says. Oh, Lord. Verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and kneeled down and prayed. Y'all there yet? I'm sorry. I used to jump right on into it, didn't I? I said, hey, Paige, I'm sorry. 
give me. Come on, catch up, catch up. I'll catch up. On, on, on the clock. <laughs> he says this. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast, a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but what? Thine be done. Jesus had consecrated himself and committed himself so much to where that he wanted God's will to be done over his own. Everybody repeat after me. I should, I should be living a life, living a life to what I want, to where I want God's will God's to be done, to be done over, mine. over mine. Now let that sink in. Let that sink in. Because a lot of people miss that. A lot of people really, really miss that. See, okay, let me let me dial it back a notch. Maybe I didn't say this last week, or maybe I haven't even said it before. You got to come to God to the point to where He's God. Lord, I can't do this without you. I can't I can't live holy without Him. I can't speak correctly without Him. No matter how much education I get, I'm not that smart outside of him. No matter what I no matter what I think, no matter what I feel, it's all it it all becomes null and void if it's outside of him. It, and, 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 and that's what a lot of people miss that because a lot of people when they when they come to the Lord Jesus Christ, they begin to think. Most of the time, they, re they rebuttal back, they dial back from God because they're afraid. They're afraid they're going to miss out on fun. They're afraid they're going to miss out on entertainment. Uh, I was talking to a group of young people the other day. Uh, I, that's one reason why a lot of children, they, when they, as they get older, now I know not, I'm not just talking about in specific, this is specifically in a situation. A lot of people, they decide to leave mom and daddy's house Mainly because of three reasons. They can't drink, they can't smoke, and they can't have sex. Yeah. Now I know that there are other situations, there are other scenarios behind that. Mom and daddy might be beating on you. You might be being molested. Blah, 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 or whatever. Or whatever. I mean, it's because there's so many other different scenarios. But, I'm, but on the vast majority, I don't left my house because my dad's an a-hole. You figure out what a-hole is. You know, I'm trying to they ain't gonna pass the pastor preaching at the pulpit. No, you figure out what the A mean. Come on, Come on catch up with me. See, we, we're talking to reality now. We're talking real reality. There's a lot of people refuse to commit themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ because they had commitment issues at home. I have. Ain't we sit up and I did. I have. I, I rebelled against my mom and my dad. For, for quite a few years. But finally one day the light bulb clicked on and I was like, man, my, and my father had passed away by this time. And I, I like, I'm 26 years old, married with kids. And I'm thinking in my head like, Lord, I can't do this without you. I, I need your help. I was sitting up in my grandma's living room and I just started repenting. And my mom was like, she, she understood, the, she understood the fight. And she, baby, no, all right, don't worry about it. Grandma said, no, I'll pay him, let the boy talk. Let him repent. <laughs> I mean, literally. I came to the point to where I can't do this on my own. I, I can't. I, I, you, 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 you finally get to a point to where if you beat your head up against the wall long enough, eventually you're going to figure, figure out you got a bruise on the side of your face and it hurts. <laughs> Some of y'all catch that later on. Here is Jesus. He was committing himself to God on the level to where he was taking sin, every single thing that you can think of that's wrong. He took it on himself. Why? So that you can be made free. Now, none of us have to take the weight of sin on ourselves. None of us. I mean, just imagine, some of us, we get tempted to smoke a cigarette and we yield. 
We get tempted to lie, and we yield to it. We get tempted to curse, we yield to it. It's an interesting story. If you go back and read about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God gave him three, he gave us three separate generations. Abraham was already 100 years old. Isaac was 40 some odd, over 50 some odd years old before he actually even committed himself to God. Did y'all know that? Think about it. And then he came over with Jacob. And we know Jacob, he was called Trickster. God eventually had to change Jacob's name to Israel, meaning country or nation. And Jacob was a trickster. He was in his 50 before he committed to God. Three separate generations. Three separate generations. What, go back and look at it. All three generations, you'll see that God appeared, showed himself to Abraham or Abram. Abram chose God. Abram commanded his household. The Bible says that. Commanded his household after God. Then Abraham, I mean Isaac, was being taught by his father about God. But guess what? But then God showed up to Isaac. Isaac then turned, had to commit himself to God. And so forth with Jacob. What's the key, what's the main thing that happened with all three of them? Each, every last one of them had to commit themselves to God. There you go. Separately, individually, every last one of them. You ain't no different. You ain't no different. You ain't no different. At some point in time, you're going to have to commit yourself over to God. But Lord, here I am. I love that song. It says, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. you my God. And a lot of us ain't figured that out yet. Because we think we're going to lose fun. We think we're going to miss out on all the entertainment. Mm -hmm. We think we're going to um, lose out money. People think you're going to be made fun of. And guess what? You very well might be made fun of. I am. You very well might be. And guess what? That's part of the persecution. You will, you will go through it. Yeah. But here's the question. What is it of a man gains his life but then loses his soul? Jesus even said that. Yeah, so now you now let's pick it up. Everybody say new ground. New ground. Here is where when you do consecrate yourself over to Lord Jesus Christ, God is in you now. You, you're born again. God is in you, and you've made a commitment to serve Him. This is what God gonna start doing. Get that out of there. Get that out of there. Oh, better than either. Get that out of there. What's going on? God's on the inside of you. He's pulling weeds out. Exactly. Very much so. He's sitting up on the throne. He has opened himself up to you. Now he's sitting on the inside of you. Think about it. Think about where every time where you go. You start making the, your surroundings more what? Comfortable for you. You think God ain't going to do the same thing? Well, I kind of like who I am. Really? You like who you are. I used to think that there was nothing wrong with having sex before you get married. Now, I'm just talking about it. We still talking about consecration now. We still talking about consecration. I used to think there was nothing wrong with having sex before you get married. But then I started reading the Word of God, and I heard, God, you the one saying, if any man wants to be with, have sex, let him get married. Oh, but don't get married ignorantly, because you commend to him. Uh, you got all these witnesses watching you say, I'm going to stay faithful to this one woman. Forget all the situations and surroundings and people get a divorce every day. Blah, blah. Forget all that. You the one said, be faithful. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit yourselves. You the one said. So who? Now you committing yourself to him because he said it. It ain't just something that you've read in the book. You read it in the book because he made sure it got there. You're now taking that scripture that's over in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Ephesians chapter 3. You're taking that scripture 
and you actually applying it to what Jesus is saying. You said, Jesus said, God said this. Oh, okay. Now you're committing to what he said. Why? God is now on the inside of you, and he, I used to think, ain't no wrong having sex before I get married. God says, no, get that stuff out of here. I used to think there wasn't nothing wrong with having a little cocktail from time to time. No, get that stuff out of here. Oh, I can say what I think. No, get that stuff out of here. Being deceitful? Oh, no, get that stuff out of here. But what does he bring in? Righteousness. He lets he puts in righteousness. How hope to watch this. Go, go, we all read at New Ground. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Glory to God. Everybody say glory to God. Glory to God. Watch what God does. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Because God is kicking stuff out now. This is the thing that's happening as you consecrate yourself over to God. Excuse me, look what it says. Verse 10. No, verse 9. I've been studying this scripture for I don't know how long. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm just now starting to get an inkling of what it really, really, really means. I, I watched the movie Lucy, and it's talking about the brain capacity. You know, that's a pretty interesting movie too, though. I know, it's, it's, it's all movie. I promise you understand that. But God is so cool. He even puts his examples even in movies to where you can go back to the word. And if you know the word of God, you won't just take it as some kind of psychological, hermeneutical, some professor, doctor, he, what he didn't say. It. Now, they got they, they got their degrees and MDDs and HDs and PH, elemental kettle P's and all that stuff. And they got the stuff. And they learn it. And they know it. And guess what? They still got to submit themselves to Jesus Christ. Watch what it says here. Watch what it says, verse 9. Y'all there? He says, there remains therefore a rest to the people of God. A rest to the people of God. A rest? A rest? I'm a born again believer. I've been saved for 30 some odd years. You can't tell me, little young poo poo. You don't know what you think you're talking about. I'm committed to the Lord. Then why is your life so raggedy? Why is it that I, we, we found out this past Sunday, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple. You'll know it. You'll know. I'll be able to look at your lifestyle and I'll be able to see that your lifestyle is different from a regular old person, from a sinner, mm -hmm. from somebody who don't believe in God. I'll be able to see that. I see, we're not getting into flaws and faults. Do not, do not patronize God. You cannot deceive God. You can trick me, you can try to pull the wool over my eyes, but you can't trick God. You cannot do it. And if people really even watching you, you won't be able to trick them too easily. I'm not saying watching you as in being suspicious. Walking around, I cannot live a life of not trusting anybody. I just can't do it. It's because that that not trusting, that's fear. That's that's fear based. You walk around me, me and Denise have been married almost 18 years, and I'm still not trusting her, but that she's going to go commit adultery. That's crazy. Uh, it's like, really? Well, why would I want to even put that fear? The Bible tells us fear has torment. Why would I want to torture myself that way? So at some point in time, i got to trust somebody. So he said, there remained therefore a rest to the people of who? God. It's God's people. God's people. Why isn't God? It should seem to me as if God's people should be the most rested, peaceful people on the planet. Or on any planet. I say it all the time. If God did make aliens, Trent, my, uh, uh, Optimus Prime and Megatron, if he did create them, I mean, if they do exist, he the one created them. And Optimus Prime, he said, there should be rest for, and peace for all sentinel beings. Man, I got that down. Cool, didn't I? I'm sorry, that's how Optimus Prime called that. There should be rest and peace, man. God said, there remains a rest. So let's find out what this rest is. For he that is entered, stop, 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 see, stop. No longer trying to do, stop, stop. No, no longer trying to 
times in y'all miss that. Cease. That's a very, very powerful word. Cease. Stop. Stop. You ain't trying to do. You not trying to do your own works. As God stopped doing stop. He stopped. He stopped. God stopped. God ceased. He no more. No more. No more. God is not trying to do any more works. He's already done done it. It's already done finished. That light bulb just clicked in on me about two weeks ago. Because I remember asking somebody about it. And uh, as a person I really, really highly respect. And, and they never asked me back. I know why they didn't ask me back. Let God reveal it to yourself. Mm -hmm. God, stop. Why am I trying to bust my head up against this wall to get this thing accomplished? It ain't my work. It's God's. God done already done done it, so why am I trying to go do something that he already done done? <laughs> done done it. Y'all, yeah, the English is bad, but you sure got the good revelation on it. <laughs> he, uh, it's already done. It's, uh, it's like, it's already finished. So, what's my part? What's my part? For us, I mean, I mean let us therefore, let us therefore, let us, therefore, to enter into that rest. What rest? The work that's already done. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So how do I know if I'm in unbelief? How do I know my, if, I'm a, if I'm going out trying to do what God already done accomplish? How has this got to do with anything or consecration and dedication? Watch this. If once you start realizing, hey, God has already done this. What's my part? Enter into what he's already done done. What God done did. Already done finished. You enter into that. Mm -hmm. How do I enter into that? By believing it. Mm -hmm. Lord, all right, fine. What's going What did happen now? I ain't trying to go trying to finish it and do it. So I'm a, I, guess what? That's a weight off my shoulder. I, I don't, I don't. What, what, what am I going to do? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. I praise you, Father God. The work is already finished. I'm coming. Lord Jesus. God, what's God doing? He's been pulling the weeds out. And that weed of unbelief. And he's been pulled it out of you. You didn't say, okay, Lord. You just got into the word. Now the word of God. What? Look what it has done now. Verse 12 says, Oh Lord. For the word of God, who who? Is what? Quick, quick, quick. and powerful, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of what? Soul, soul and, and spirit. 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 We'll hold your finger right now. We're gonna come back to that. And the joints yes. and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So now God's word been inside of you. You've been sitting in front of you. You've already you said, Lord, I'm going to commit myself to you. You committed to come to church and start hearing the word of God. You committed to sitting on your couch, laying in your bed, on your iPod or iPhone or whatever, your tablet or just regular old book. There you go, Bible book right there. You said, I'm going to commit to read this thing. And then God, you read it and you don't understand none of it. But you have committed to read it. And God is going to hear. Poop. I'll kick that out of there. And before you know it, you're in prayer. You, Lord, not my will be done. And God pulls out something else out of you. Now you wake up. You come up from prayer. You come out of prayer. And you like, okay, Lord. And you just go about your business. And then when a situation comes up, it's already been taken care of. What's been taken care of? Whatever it is you've been praying about, whatever you it's already done. You believe that it's finished and you ain't got to be concerned about it. God has pulled that thing up out of you. Now what's going on? You can just get up and just go to work. You can just get up and go hang out with your wife. You can get up and go hang out with your children. And, you know, I used to be, it used to bother me on my on my day of rest that I did not get up and go into prayer and work and praise and worship and study the word of God. It used to bother me. Now when I wake up, I may do this. 
one chapter. Denise, let's go get something to eat. <laughs> it used to bother me when I, if I didn't spend an hour, I spent an hour and a half, two hours, just studying the Word of God. There will be days where you will do that. But for the most part, okay, Lord, it's already finished. I, I, I'm, I'm committed to you. And then God points you, keep you pointed in the right direction. He's been pulling these things about you. Why? Because the Word of God is quick. It's the guy off inside of you, and it's bouncing around, it's going all over you, and it's powerful, and it's saying, whoa, unbelief, all up in ivory. Come on. <laughs> God now knocks out, because he's already defeated that unbelief. You just haven't released it, but you committed to being committed to him, and before you know it, that unbelief, bye-bye. I ain't got to deal with you anymore. Now you believe. Believe what? Whatever it is that you was you what you've been studying on. I used to believe that there was nothing wrong with having sex outside of marriage. Now, because the word of God got inside of me, and I believe more what God than said than about what our 99.3 billion people didn't say. Oh, I ain't nothing wrong with that. You can do that all you want. And guess what? No, you wrong, because God is the one who said that's wrong. God is the one who said, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. I didn't say that. God said that. So now I'm committed to what he said, not what you said. Look what he said. Quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Key verse right there. Piercing even to the dividing Asunder, split into of what? Soul and spirit. Everybody repeat after me. Say, I am, I am a, spirit. a spirit. I live, I live in, a physical body. in a physical body. And I have, and I have a, soul. a soul. Let's break up the three for teaching purposes only. Some of y'all know this, some of you all do not. I am a spirit. Don't look at, look at my physical body, but just pretend like it's a spirit. It's, I'm just like, I'm Casper, a friendly ghost. I'm right here. Here I am, an ivory, the ghost. Ivory, born again, ghost. Jesus, here you go. Here I am, right here. But my spirit man is so intertwined with my soul man who looks just like my spirit man. But the soul it's broken down in three parts as well. It's the mind. This brain is not the mind. It's not the mind. It holds the mind, but it's not the mind. The brain is this flesh, it's tissue. But the mind is the ability to think, to reason, to make decisions. Within that soul area, also holds your emotions. Do I really need to explain what emotions is? Within that soul area also is your will. What is your will? Your ability to choose. I choose to continue to smoke this cigarette even though I know it's killing me. I choose to go have sex with this woman that I ain't married to and I choose to open up that door of sexually transmitted disease, baby mama or baby daddy drama. And you know all, some of y'all know the dramas that entail, entails all of that. And I, now I open, since I have chosen to go have sex outside of marriage that I ain't married to my, that I ain't married to my wife, I'm married to, I ain't married to her, but I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something with this because she's just so fine, Lord. Have to be with her or him or her be with him. Now I say, hey spouse, I'm also gonna open up baby mama drama as well as sexually transmitted diseases to you too. <laughs> see what I'm see what's going on? All that's going on in the soul. All that's going on in the soul. But God's word is so Sharp. It knows the difference.
between your born again spirit and just your soul. And they are so intertwined, they live on the inside of this body. The part that we can physically see and touch and smell, whether it be good or bad smell. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All this is being revealed through you consecrating yourself over to the Lord Jesus Christ, consecrating yourself over to God. You dying in prayer. Not my will be done, Lord. But your will, you're surrendering your will that's locked off in your in your soul area over to God. And now you're saying, God, I'm giving you total access to everything of what my soul has to offer, which is nothing. And God says, but I'm going to use it for my glory. Y'all better get this. I don't know where that just came from. And yeah, it came from the Lord. Think, think, think about that. God, you said, Lord, I'm committing myself over to you. And I'm giving you control of everything that's about me. I'm giving it to you. So when you do that, what else can happen but God go in and start cutting stuff up? Look what he says. Even to the joints of marrow, uh, in the joints and marrow, Joints. I remember, I mean, done about 20 years ago in my early 20s when I was able to run, just run, just run, run! Boy, run. I'd like, be out there in the Marine Corps, out there in the hills and woods and just run it. Run, go, go walk, go walk 25 miles at six miles an hour. I mean, y'all ever walk six miles an hour? I mean, you humping, man. You just, you getting it. And now you, when I ran a 100 yard dash, me, and my brother, and my sister, we ran track. I used to better run a 100 yard dash in 12 seconds flat. Balling. We were fast, man. That was only two seconds off Olympic pace. We were fast. Woo! Now, in the 20 years later, Joint said, what are you doing? <laughs> no, you got to stretch. <sighs> You're like, Lord Jesus. Okay, them joints and God's word is all up in your joints. When you said, by Jesus stripes I'm healed, God's word, that healing can go right off into the joint. And going into the marrow, all these people would definitely have a different um, type of blood transfusions and, and bone marrow transplants, stuff like that. God is operating off on the inside of you, bringing forth healing. I ain't talking about no freaking treatment, man. I'm not just talking about a treatment. We talking about healing. God says, I desire for you to be healed. You're healed. You're healed. Be made whole. That's what God wants for you. That's somebody needed that out there. God wants you to walk in health. That's his desire. And you just have to say, look, you have to stop claiming AR. Oh, Lord, my arthritis. No, why are you trying to claim it? It ain't yours. Jesus took care of that. Why are you trying to write you on all this? This is my, yeah, I know, my sinus problem. I don't even say my, every time I sneeze, shoot, by Jesus Christ, I'm healed. If I call, <coughs> by Jesus Christ, I'm healed. I'm healed. It ain't my, I don't want, think about it. When we get into the new kingdom, it ain't going to be no such thing as coughing. It's going to go away. Got to sneeze. Ain't gonna be, ain't no gonna be any. Uh, there ain't no gonna be. Y'all heard that right there. <laughs> there isn't going to be any kind of allergic reactions to nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be able to literally go smell a rose and enjoy the smell of the rose, mm -hmm. and I have to go, man. man what a Benadryl, that man. What a Benadryl. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. In joints and marrow, and is here's the key part, and is. The discerner in, is a discerner of figuring out. That's we, 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 we don't say discerner, we say figuring out. Yeah. Of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So now, as you consecrate yourself off to God, and God is in you, and God said, I can really, really see if you really commit yourself off to me or not. You don't have to come. This is where people look at me and they say, oh, you just different. Why, why is it? It's like, it's like almost, it's almost like you're an open book. I've had people tell me that. I said, why? I have nothing to hide. 
Why do I gotta hide anything? I don't have to try to deceive you into giving something or deceive you into doing your job the correct way on the job or deceive you to being faithful to me. Why, why? That's too much work. It's, it's, it's like that's too much work. God has already finished the work. So either I'm gonna you gonna trust me or you ain't. Either I'm gonna be with you or you not. Either we're gonna do this thing together on the job or we not. Either we're gonna be committed to the thing or we not. There is no middle ground. Well, you know, you busting up a lot of stuff, Ivy. You, 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 you people like to live in that gray area. You live in that gray area. That first bust all that up. Look what it says here, verse here. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things. No, I want you to catch that. Any creature. They're all these little bitty bugs, creature. Bugs, dragons, dinosaurs. If there is an Optimus Prime or a Megatron or a Bumblebee, there ain't no creature that ain't manifest in God. God see. There is no time with God. He sees the, be the beginning at the same time while he sees at the ending, and he sees everything in between. He just sees it. He don't have to go look for it like we do. Like you look for your keys. He, he don't have to say, oh, they are there. Oh, oh they, they are there. Oh. He sees if you're trying to be deceptive. Neither but all things are what? Naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. No, that's some bad English right there too. <laughs> Everything that we have to do with God, God sees it. You can't hide nothing from God. God sees if you sitting in front of the computer and you sitting up there trying to find women to talk to. People be trying to send me dumb stuff on Facebook and through my email address. Look at these naked oh, pictures. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it. I said, Mama, come look at this. Mm -hmm. Denise, look, I'm going to show you. Well, you didn't write this therapy repeat for what? God watching me look at the stuff. Right. He see me doing it. You can send it to me all you want. Guess what I'm going to do? Click delete. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to delete it. Because you know you got an email box. You got to put the, put the check in the email box yeah. first and then you delete it. <laughs> See, you know what? You're going to take a peek first. And even if I accidentally did click on it and open it up, delete, click, get out of it right there. Hold on one second. So I used to show my mama. So I why you show me that I said, Mama, because I'm holding myself accountable to the person that's available at that time. My mama's here or my wife here. Some of y'all need to bust yourselves out. If you bust yourself out, it'll, it'll, it'll help you stay consecrated. Mm -hmm. sure. It'll help you. I know it it's done help me. Come here, Denise, let me show you something. Bust myself out. I don't want to look at this. I say, Lord Jesus, I don't want I don't want this, Father. I'm, I'm consecrated to you, Lord. I, I don't want this going on in my life. Show me, Father. Now, what do I need to do? Well, tell your wife about it. Huh? <laughs> tell you oh, Denise, come here. Ain't no big thing to me now. Why? Because it's open before him. So why am I trying to lock it away off into this little bitty corner of my mind? That's right, that's right over here. Don't nobody know what's that me and God. Me and God. Yeah, God is the one who knows. So why are you trying to hide it? <laughs> oh, glory to God, man. Watch it. Last, last verse. He's in uh, the very verse 14. See then. My time is almost up. We got four minutes. See then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. He said, just hold. He said, if you really have consecrated yourself over to God, hold on to that. You hold on to that. You hold on to that. Do not back off from that. Now ask yourself, ask yourself this question. What is it that you're trying to hide from God? Hmm. You, you can't hide it from him. You can't hide it from him. He's, he knows about it. He sees it. You know, and for, for the regular old minded person, that's hard to come to grips with that God see me doing this. He see me thinking this. He see me in my ear for my radio. He see me with this conversation on the phone that I'm having with my cousin. If you gossiping on the phone, 
when there's a point where you got to talk about certain things, you better learn to figure out a way to be able to talk about stuff without gossiping. You better figure it out because God is the one watching you. He's sick about it. The Israelites, they failed dead 23,000 of them because they was out there complaining and murmuring, talking about each other. Go, look, go, go over there in the book of Numbers where, where uh, 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 Moses and his brother, his, his brother and his sister, and uh, Miriam, they was in the, they was the, was right there in the temple. They was in the temple, in the church, fella, in the church. And Aaron and Miriam was sitting up there talking, who Moses think he is married to that black woman? Yep. <laughs> and that moment, God said, get out of this church talking about all that dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. Who do y'all think, man, they was in the church? Got racial discrimination stuff going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. How in the world? I mean, like, what can you hide from God? So when you consecrate yourself, you basically open your think about it, you have opened yourself up to God. So instead of trying to hide it, what do you do with it? Lord, I'm sorry. Not my will, but your will. I'm, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm so sorry, Lord. And when you start living, when you once you recognize that, it come it becomes really easy to live a repentant life. Mm -hmm. Don't look at pre the prayer of consecration as in you trying to straighten somebody else out. That's intercessory prayer. But nine times out of ten, that it, it's bad for my man. And when I study about consecration, we're gonna eventually get to um, the prayer of. Um, intercessory or for somebody else. It's kind of funny to me. Every time I start trying to pray about somebody else, something shows up inside of me where God said, what, what about this? You, you're doing the same thing. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and I'll say, okay, Lord. And you, you, what do you do? You, you don't sit up there and play games with it. You just repent. Yeah. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Show me how not to do that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, you know a whole nother level about the prayer of consecration and dedication. Because now you have made yourself available for the master's use. God can use you now because you become an open book in front of people's eyes. Mm -hmm. Now people still try to pinpoint it. They try to point out flaws and faults. But guess what? You say, okay, that ivory is dead and gone. You just put your name in that spot. That ivory is dead and gone. That was just yesterday. I, don't, I stepped outside of my righteousness. That, that I was dead God. I'm sorry, forgive me. And you get back to your righteousness and you stay there. Mm -hmm. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. that? Praise God. Every head bow. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. There is no other God but you. I do believe today is a believer's meeting, but I never take anything for granted. So if there's anybody in this room who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord, I want you to raise your hand. Just like I thought everybody in this room born again, every hand raised anyway. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for all of the events that has taken place tonight and of course this week so far. And we believe, Father God, as we leave this place, we'll find our loved ones doing well and intact, maybe even better than we left them. And we covet it with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of tonight's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Hey, all of you all out there, remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time, too.